This is my video on dyspraxia. To make a video this long on dyspraxia has been a long time coming. For those that don't know, I have made multiple videos on this subject. So I really wanted to put this project together. Remember, these are just my opinions, so I urge you to do your own research. So without any further hesitation, let's get into this. What is dyspraxia? That is a good question. I feel many, many mistake dyspraxia with dyslexia. So let's give a definition. In a simple sense, dyspraxia is a developmental coordination disorder. Perhaps a better way to describe dyspraxia is to state what it can look like. So people with dyspraxia may struggle riding a bike, driving a car. They may struggle focusing in class or at work. There may be coordination and or organizational issues. Now I saw a good flowchart on dyspraxia online which identified um, five categories that I liked that could be barriers and these were organization, gross motor, fine motor, concentration and communication. So let's give an example. Jack has dyspraxia and he has bad memory. Laura has dyspraxia and she struggles with driving and holding a pencil therefore having fine motor issues. And Leon has dyspraxia and he struggles in his PE class due to his coordination issues. So the take home here is that dyspraxia is not the same for everybody because dyspraxia affects different people in different ways. I made a video describing dyspraxia as a Rubik's cube. The reason I made this analogy is because dyspraxia can be complex like a Rubik's cube because it affects people differently. It is not, I repeat, it is not a one-size-fits-all situation. So let me tell you a personal story. When I went to university to do my first degree, I was referred to what I believe is the student support department. From there, they arranged an assessment with an educational psychologist. When I met the educational psychologist, they did a sequence of tests. They then concluded in their report that I had dyspraxia. Before that time, I had only heard of dyslexia. I had no idea what dyspraxia was. So let's imagine you suspect you may have dyspraxia and you have had these suspicions for a long time. The next obvious question is who can diagnose you? Who can give you that official diagnosis? Now, a lot of people that I know don't know how to answer this question. Is that surprising in the information age? I will let you form your own assumptions. Now, according to the research, I have done the following, and these are the professionals that can diagnose. Now, apologies if I butcher up any of the names. So this can be a pediatrician, a pediatric occupational therapist, a pediatric physiotherapist, a clinical psychologist and an educational psychologist. Now this came from the NHS Direct website which I believe is a reputable website. So if you want an official diagnosis then these are the professionals you need to consult with. So please pay attention to the following information. If you want a diagnosis and you're a student, go to the student support section to get the ball rolling. If you work and you suspect you have dyspraxia, then I would consider seeing the doctor to see if they can refer you for an assessment. They may refer you to some type of specialist that can give confirmation of a diagnosis. So that is the most relevant information that I'm aware of with regards to the diagnosis of dyspraxia. Dyspraxia in the educational system. If you have dyspraxia, you can absolutely prosper in the educational system. But one of the first questions you should ask yourself is what is my learning style? Now there are seven different learning styles but to keep things as concise as possible we're just going to go over three and these learning styles are the following visual, auditory and kinesthetic. Let's put these learning styles in some brief context. Visuals is pictures and videos etc. Auditory that can be podcasts and discussions in a group. Kinesthetics is hands-on learning Think of a musician uh, playing the guitar. Read and write is reading texts or reading a book. 
As stated previously, these are the three learning styles. So my question to you is, what is your learning style? If you don't know the answer, that's okay. Just reflect on the best way you learn. So Jack loves podcasts. I think he is an auditory learner. Laura loves YouTube. She may be a visual learner. What do you love? Or what style of learning do you gravitate to? So you've established your learning style, but now what do you do? Well, if you're a visual learner, you need to create a visual learning style. Me personally, I turn everything into an explainer video or I find an explainer video to explain the content. If I have to read a book, then the preference is audible. If I have to read text, then I use the speed technique known as skimming. You may be asking, what is skimming? Well, that's a topic for another video. Now, once you have found your learning style, then you can apply this to any class, whether it's science, maths, English, etc. Finding your learning style is a great way to overcome to overcome barriers that are associated with dyspraxia. There are other barriers, such as focus and concentration, and, um, and this is where one should invest in productivity and self-development. As the philosopher Francis Bacon states, quote, knowledge is power, end of quote. You can elevate your position and gain skills with knowledge, and this is a currency of great power. So hopefully you can use this knowledge to benefit you if you're going through the educational system. Dyspraxia and reasonable adjustments. Now, we're talking here about working and having dyspraxia. So I'm just gonna be brief about this. So dyspraxia, to my understanding, is a disability that is protected under the Equality Act. Um, now, what does this mean? It means that generally speaking, your employer has to make reasonable adjustments. Now, the purpose of the reasonable adjustment is to take away the barriers of the disability. A reasonable adjustment will depend on the type of work you do. So think about that. So someone who is working in IT may get certain specialist equipment, but other reasonable adjustments could be awareness training for management and all the team to understand your condition and to understand what adjustments are needed. These reasonable adjustments can be negotiated through management and can be facilitated by an organization called Access to Work if you're based in the UK. Consider reasonable adjustments as a great tool to use to enable yourself to elevate and prosper and to reach your potential. Okay, so this is Dyspraxia Q&A. So this is just a quick question and answer session. And the reason why I've put this in here is because I'm hoping it may be helpful to answer some of the questions that you may have. Question one, where can I get more information on dyspraxia? So to answer this, I would first look on the Dyspraxia Foundation website. This is where I first built my knowledge on dyspraxia. And there's also um, the NHS Direct also has some interesting information on dyspraxia also. So we've got two sources there, the Dyspraxia Foundation website and the NHS Direct. Question two, is there a cure for dyspraxia? According to the research I have done, at the time of writing, there is no cure for dyspraxia. There is, however, therapies that can help. Remember, there are differences between treatment and cures. A treatment improves condition while a cure removes the condition. Understand this distinction because it is important. Question three, is dyspraxia a disability? To my understanding, dyspraxia is a learning difficulty and therefore is not classified as a learning disability. To my knowledge, remember that learning difficulties and learning disabilities are covered in the Equality Act. Question four, what is neurodiversity? Neurodiversity, quote, sees brain differences as normal rather than defects, end of quote. So it refers to the diversity of human minds and this type of terminology challenges negative stereotypes. So seeing it as a difference rather than a defect um, is the important distinction that neurodiversity makes. Question five. 
Can I get help with dyspraxia at university? Indeed, you can get support from the university from the Disabled Student Allowance. In my experience, I'm currently getting support as a student uh, with dyspraxia while doing my masters. So I would suggest if you have dyspraxia and you are a student, then try and access the student services for support. So we have addressed in conclusion the following. What is dyspraxia? Who can officially diagnose dyspraxia? We've looked at dyspraxia in education and we have looked at dyspraxia in reasonable adjustments. We have also attempted to answer some of the common questions that people might have with regards to dyspraxia. Now, I have time stamped the videos to help if you want to find answers to specific questions that you desire. So that is my animation video on dyspraxia. If you enjoyed this video and you want to support the content, then please like the video and also please share the video as well. Um, again, if you want to support the channel, like the video and share the video. This helps um, with the algorithm, which is an important part of the YouTube galaxy, so to speak. So with that being said, I sincerely hope you have enjoyed the content.